G'day all, welcome to another video. So uh, this one is tricky to record. We are no longer at the beach, we are in the rainforest. Nice. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the div instruction. Now div is for integer division, but it's unsigned. The idiv instruction is for signed integer division. And I was trying to mix them both together and do a single video, but uh, I think my camera cuts out and I, it's just problems. So what I might do is just concentrate on just div. And uh, hopefully at the end we can get through a little example with uh, the Euclidean algorithm. Okay, so div is for uh, integer division. Uh, div. It takes a single operand, which can be either a register or memory. Okay, so the other operand is implied. And also it's a little bit weird where the result goes, but it's quite cool because not only do we get the result from dividing, uh, we also get the remainder after division. So that's quite cool as well. All right, but let's just have a bit of a look at how div works. It all depends on the size of the input operand. So say we've got something like um, BL, an 8-bit operand. If your input operand is 8 bits, then the implied operand, or what's divided, is AX, the 16-bit reg register AX. So say we want to divide 50. Then we could say MOV AX 50. And say we want to divide 50 by, I don't know, 10 maybe. Okay, so that's going to do it right there. So if we mov AX 50 and we mov BL 10 and then we div BL, what that means is divide uh, AX. Go away. <laughs> Mosquitoes and flies here. Uh, divide AX by BL. And what's going to happen is uh, for 8-bit division, uh, we're going to get the result in uh, AL and the remainder in AH. So what I might do is actually, we'll divide something else. Let's go divide by three. Um, yeah, just to show that we do actually get a remainder and I'll put a breakpoint here and we'll hit a bit of a run and we'll see what happens. Okay, so after div BL, uh, if we have a bit of a look up here, what we end up with is, uh, is 10 in uh, AL. Uh, 10 is what, 16. Yeah, so 3 goes into 50 16 times, and there's a remainder of 2. Yeah, so your remainder goes into AH, and uh, your result goes into AL. Um, all right, so the, the next uh, size up from 8 bits, maybe we're dividing uh, 16 bits. And maybe it's in CX. Yeah, so what the... Uh, if you want to divide 16 bits, then once again, we just call um, div, and then provide a 16-bit result, but... For 16 bits and up, something a little bit strange happens. The implied operand is a compound register made by joining together RDX and RAX. So if we're using 16 bits, uh, the implied operand is actually DXAX. Yeah, so it's a 32-bit register. The top 16 bits are whatever's in DX, and the lower 16 bits are whatever's in AX. Now, this is a little bit strange, but it just means that you can divide larger numbers. All right, but what we do have to be careful of here is that DX is, is either has bits that we want to divide or you've got to make sure that DX is cleared. So in our example, 50 uh, doesn't, you know, it doesn't require anything in DX. So what we've got to do is uh, X or DX, DX. Okay, so div with 16 bits, the result will end up in AX. This will be um, 50 divided by whatever our parameter is. And the remainder after division will be in DX. Yeah, so let's have a bit of a run. Uh, there we go. So our result is 16 by the looks of it. Yeah, or 10 in hexadecimal. And the remainder is 2. Yeah, so you see the remainder goes over to DX. Okay, so moving along, if we move up to 32 bits, much the same thing happens. We've got this idea of a compound register, so EDX. EAX will be what's divided. Um, so what we might do, we might change this up a little bit. Let's go mov into EAX, a little bit bigger, 7,800. Okay, so once again, you might have important bits in EDX that you actually want to divide. Uh, maybe you're dividing the 64-bit compound register EDX EAX. Uh, in our case, we, we haven't got anything in EDX, so we might just um, clear it. ECX for our divider, let's divide it by 78. All right, so right here, what we want to do is divide 7,871 by 78 using 32 bits. 
Okay, so when we use a 32-bit operand here as our single operand, then the implied uh, compound register for div is edxeax, 64 bits. And the result of the division is going to go into eax, and the remainder after division is going to go into edx. Uh, what I might do this time is add watches so we get an idea of what's happening uh, not in hexadecimal. Um, let's hit run. And we'll get, a, uh, we'll get a watch happening. Maybe I've already got it. I do. So EAX and EDX. All right. So we're looking for the result after our division, which will be in EAX. And the remainder after the division will be in EDX. Okay. So at the moment, there we go. There's our div. Okay. So the result, if we divide 7,871 by 78, the result is 100 and the remainder after that division is 71. So the, the final version that you, that you might use is uh, 64 bits. These orange butterflies flying around, absolutely marvelous. Okay, so if you're using 64 bits, maybe we'll go back to BL, why not, RBX. And I'll change this back to RBX. Um, okay, so if you're using uh, 64 bits in your div just here, RBX is, get out of here, mate. Trying to give me malaria. Not today, mate. Okay, so, so for our 64-bit version, the compound register that we're dividing is RDX, RAX. So RDX is the upper 64 bits, and RAX is the lower 64 bits. And now we've got a 128-bit um, compound register that we can divide, which is pretty interesting, really. So in this final example, I won't put zero in RDX. We'll put a value in there. So uh, RAX has that number. So that's 79,000, 70 something thousand. Uh, RDX has four in it. So whatever this happens to be, I mean, I don't know what this number is, but yeah, it's some, some absolutely gigantic number. And the value that we're dividing this gigantic uh, RDX, RAX number by is 1238 in RBX. So if we hit run, uh, I should mention also that the result will go into RAX, so that's the result right there in hexadecimal, whatever that happens to be, and the remainder in RDX, so 3F7 in hexadecimal. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, but um, yeah, often, often, as we were doing before, you were just uh, X or RDX, RDX, make sure there's nothing in RDX. Um, okay, so what I want to do now, what I want to finish up with is uh, something called GCD or the greatest common divisor. And there's a really famous algorithm, I think a strong contender for the greatest algorithm ever. Uh, it's called Euclid's algorithm. So we just do this and we say GCD uh, 56 and 78, for example. Uh, so I've got a version up above written in C++, but we want to write one in, um, in assembly. So let's just end all. Uh, let's see the C++ version first of all. Uh, there you go. So the GCD there is 2. Fair enough. The greatest common divisor or the largest number that divides both 56 and 78. The answer is 2. Uh, if we come up here to uh, the GCD in C++, all you'll see is that it takes a 64-bit operand and if they're less than or equal to 0, well, they won't be less than 0 because it's unsigned. We just return 0 or an error condition. Uh, but otherwise, the interesting part about the Euclidean algorithm, or what it actually does, is it says the greatest common divisor between X and Y, the greatest common divisor between X and Y is the same as the greatest common divisor between X mod Y and Y. It's pretty interesting stuff. I don't know how he came up with it, but um, yeah, it's in, his, uh, it's in his book, Elements, Euclid's Elements. Uh, anyway, so, so what we end up doing really is, uh, is just taking the modulus of X and Y and then swapping the registers or swapping the variables each time. Yeah, so temp equals X, uh, Y equals X mod Y, and then X equals temp. Yeah, so you swap your, your, your variables around, you take the modulus, and at some point Y will equal zero, and whenever Y equals zero, the answer is in X. Absolutely amazing algorithm. If we do this um, 57 times that, Okay, so 114, pretty much. Yeah, the greatest common divisor between those values is 114. All right, but how do we do this in assembly? Well, 
Uh, okay, so in assembly, the first thing that we want to do is, is just the same as the C++. We want to check that our uh, values, which are passed in RCX and RDX, we want to check if they're zero. And if they are, then we want to return. So uh, we'll just move the error value uh, into RAX, and then we'll do like a comp RCX and zero, uh, JE to finished, and comp RDX and zero. J E to finished. Okay, so if, if R D X or R C X are zero, then the greatest common divisor, I mean the algorithm's not gonna work. Okay, if that's not the case, then we probably better push R B X because we'll be using him. So we better pop him at the end too, R B X. Because we're using the div instruction, we want RDX to be free. So at the moment, RDX actually has our second operand, or the Y value. Uh, we want it to be free. So what we really want to do is uh, use RBX. So I push RBX, and we pop him at the end, and we also mov RBX RDX. Yeah, so copy. Or well, I'll say um, uh, free RDX. So we can use div. So we're just about to do the div instruction with 64-bit operands. If there's something in RDX, then you know it's going to overflow. So we really want to use um, RBX or some other register instead of RDX to store that value. And here we might have our loop head. Okay, so the first thing that we've got to make sure, if we're using div, we want to uh, zero RDX. Um, and the, the lower 64 bits that we want to divide, which we have to put into R AX, uh, that at the moment, that's in RCX, or the, the Y value that we were passed. So we might mov R AX, R CX. Okay, now we're ready to call the div. So div and RBX. Okay, and after we've called the div, we want to swap our uh, x and y value around, and we want to save the remainder after that division instead of um, yeah whatever we have left to divide. And then we copy the remainder to RBX. And we've got to check if the value was zero just then. So the zero will actually be in RDX. If we comp RDX and zero, uh, J and E to loop head. Uh, okay, so at, at some point, uh, RDX or our remainder is going to be zero. The numbers are going to be evenly divisible. And at that point, we can actually return with the result. But the result is not going to be in RAX. Uh, so we better move it. It's in RCX at the moment. So we can move it into R, uh, RAX. Uh, we can pop RBX and then we can ret. And that, my friends, should be the Euclidean algorithm in assembler. Let's have a look. Awesome. Uh, first of all, we'll just run it and see if we get the same answer. I think it was 114 from before. Let's have a look. Yeah, 114. There you go. Uh, so if we come over here and we just have a bit of a step through, let's see what happens. I'll just put a breakpoint there at the top. Um, what do we want to look at? Oh, maybe those ones are good, yeah. Okay, so first of all, our, our input parameters, uh, ECX and EDX, were not zero. Yeah, then we just step through and see see what's happening. There you go, the Euclidean algorithm. So we're really just taking the remainder and swapping registers each round. That's all we're doing. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but the div instruction isn't so easy to um, to call. So we, you know, have several inconvenient things to deal with in, in, in as much as we've got a clear RDX and that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, by the time we get to the RET, you can see that our remainder, 114, is in uh, EAX and is returned. Okay, so that's about all that I wanted to say on the buzz off fly on the div instruction and uh, there's going to be links down below to I guess the Euclidean algorithm and uh, maybe the Intel manuals and things like that so you can read up on uh, div the Intel and AMD manuals both have really good references of the div instruction 
And maybe next time we'll look at iDiv. Yeah, so links to my Patreon, my Facebook, my website, and all of that stuff below. And uh, thank you for watching. I want you to have a really good day.